Welcome to 50 Laps My Way with Tony Morakovich. Perfect. And Hell Spotter yeah. Brian. I'm saving it that time. <laughs> We're saving that one, and that'll just be used for... Awesome. Um, we'll just program that in. Awesome. Um, all right. So, it's just episode five of 50 Laps My Way. So, uh, I got a lot to talk about tonight. A um, bunch of different things going on in the racing world this week. Gen 7 testing, uh, Dover last week, Talladega this week. A um, bunch of things to talk about. But tonight, we got a special guest here um, with with the Moose. That was that's a 410 Lodge, right? So yes, Moose said. Forest 10, Middletown. All right, yes, sir. Um, we got an official sponsor now. We got, uh, well, we got Hot Barbecue Wings tonight and Wings. Yeah, the, the Moose 410, Middletown Moose 410 is sponsoring us by uh, filling our bellies on these evenings. Yes, all right. So they're going to be with us now from now on, I hope. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the wings look delicious, by the way. Um, and, and we do have the, uh, the governor from the Middletown Moose yep. Lodge 410. Thank you. Yep. He's here. He's going to speak a little bit about um, what the moose, uh, what their main focus is moose worldwide is. And then uh, we'll narrow it down and talk about what the, uh, the 410 Lodge is doing for, uh, to, to achieve those goals. And, yeah. you know, with the decline uh, lately in um, social organizations and things like this, social clubs, it's, it's good that we still have uh, – it's great we still have a, a local moose. Yes. I mean, we're lucky to still have that in, in town a lot because so many towns don't have it anymore. So yeah, yeah, a lot of them are closing up because mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. membership, lack of in interest, mm -hmm. things like that. It's, uh, it's a sad tale, but there are moose that are still growing mm -hmm. and still doing what the moose does the best. Which, which, which is? To which tell us a bit is, about it. Well, the moose was set up, well, i got to give you a little bit of history so mm -hmm. you understand. In 1888, it was, a moose was started mm -hmm. by uh, Dr. Uh, Henry Wilson. And the turn of the century, James Davis uh, saw the potential of the moose, so he purchased property about... 40 miles outside west of uh, Chicago mm -hmm. and decided to do a school for children. Okay. And that school is called the City of Children or the Child City. And it's for orphans and disadvantaged children. Mm -hmm. And that's what the focus has been the moose since 1911. Wow. We, we support uh, the school, everything we do, because uh, we're nonprofit, because a lot of our uh, proceeds go to Moose Haven. Mm -hmm. We don't keep okay. it. It's not a private club mm -hmm. that can make a lot of money and do what they want. Mm -hmm. We got to do what in Moose International says. And so that's the main focus of any Moose Lodge is to support the children. Of course, we support first responders, mm -hmm. anybody in this, in Middletown, 410, but any moose in the town, anybody that has a problem or uh, any charity, anything. Like local, we, local charities and things like that. Local funders. charities, you name it. We had just had mm -hmm. one, uh, I forget his last name, but he was Drew. He has a special leukemia. Mm -hmm. This was a few months ago. We had a big band for him and a big mm -hmm. thing and we got the uh, money for the parents so they could afford his treatments wow and none of that money went to us it mm -hmm. went to him that's good so we do a lot of work and we don't get anything in return <laughs> but it, so, sometimes not even a thank you but mm -hmm. that that doesn't matter we're there as moose to help especially children that's awesome. That is, that is a great, great great yeah. thing to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so unfortunate that so many people don't know that this, these organizations still exist. exist. Moose, yeah. uh, lions, elks, I mean, so on That's, and so forth. Yeah, I was just going to say that, and I wasn't sure if that was my just my generation because I know a lot of people mm -hmm. that just in my age group that have no idea. Yeah. What, you know. Well, what? I, ha I had it already. People thought we were, 
We're a hunting club. <laughs> I go, really? You hunt yeah. moose? We hunt moose? Do you see any moose around yeah. Pennsylvania? Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Florida or, yeah. 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 or Kentucky? Yeah. You know, come on. Yeah, anyhow. <laughs> so, so, John, great, what are yeah. some of the things you do um, locally? You have bands, and I think you have comedy shows and things. Is there other events you have? Yeah, that? we have uh, coming up on November 9th. Okay. Uh, what is that band? Uh, Reminisce is going to be here. Okay. That's a very sp band that uh, uh, mm -hmm. one of our members paid so you'd come in, and he's donating the money. I f forget. I th some of it's going to go to Mo Moose Art, mm -hmm. but he has his charity. And then in uh, right before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we have Escape. They've okay. been coming every year for the past three, four mm -hmm. years because the members like it. Mm -hmm. They respond well, and that's dedicated to eye care. And it's okay. not for eyes. It's for uh, uh, cancer-related, for women. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Awesome. So it's nice to see you do things on the local level as well as, as, oh, as a tons of local nationally level, and things yeah. like this. So that's. Oh, and the kids, Again, so important. we have a Halloween party coming up for them, mm -hmm. and we have a Christmas party coming for mm -hmm. them. Um, of course, the Easter party, and we have all kinds of k children's activities in the Moose Lodge mm -hmm. for the Moose members' children, but they always sneak neighbors and that <laughs> in, but we don't care about that. It's for the kids. As long as the kids are having fun and we're making money for them. That's super. That's super, and like all, all all clubs, also you're 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 always looking for membership. Absolutely. Always looking for membership, correct? That's our big thing. We need to get members, and that's why I brought some uh, applications all right. for all you. Right. Hey, thanks. <laughs> okay, and some a little more information. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, <All laughs> so right. you know what the moose is generally all about. Okay. And the big, big news in Moose International, mm -hmm. come January 1st, every moose in the world, because mm -hmm. it's Moose International, smoke-free. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's important. I mean, that uh, that might get me back in, because my, uh, the reason I, I couldn't go to the moose to begin with, uh, I was a member for a while, but my wife, I couldn't take my wife, because she gets headaches around smoking mm -hmm. and things like this. So with that being said, I mean, that that could be the uh, the tiebreaker that gets me back in there because I know if this, I think one of the best steaks I ever had was at a moose, believe it or not. Oh yeah, we got good <laughs> steaks. Oh, you'll love Buck a Burger. We have the best burgers in T town. No, Tony will love Buck a Burger. Oh yeah, <laughs> no doubt. And we have the best <laughs> wings in town. I agree with that. For and sure. dur <laughs> and during the day, uh, we open up at new Monday through okay. Friday, eleven on the weekends. Best mm -hmm. soups in town. Um, so should somebody hear you on the pod, you know, somebody here in the podcast, and and say, hey, I, w I want to get involved in this, be a member. What, what we got to do? What, what well, we would like to see them come down to One Hundred Mill Street here okay. in Middletown, ring the bell, come on in, somebody, and take a look around and ask for an application. We want to see you. This is not a... Sounds easy enough. Yeah, yeah. just come down. We want to see who you are. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to make friends. You're going to be part of a family. It's a fraternal order. We're all brothers and sisters down there helping kids. That's, That's the awesome. way it should be. That's great, yeah. yeah. No, we could, um, if you would like, we can take a couple applications here for the podcast and, and anybody downstairs through the store and that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can bring them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah we come more up. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We will have them available if somebody wants to, and we can also t send them down to 100 Mill Street in Middletown. Heck yeah, that's what we'll do. And, what, <laughs> and once you sign up, you're a member. As soon as you pay your for uh, mm -hmm. the, it's dues plus initiation. Okay. And uh, boom, you're automatically a member. Now we uh, do have a process. Uh, to make sure that nobody's a felon, but mm -hmm. usually everybody who applies, mm -hmm. get your member. 
There you go. You can even enjoy the the lodge, and then you get your card. There's yeah. all other benefits that you'll qualify for. So that's, that's a that's yeah. a pretty nice deal. Yeah. So, sounds great. That's great. Yeah. Again, we uh, very much appreciate you coming on board and sponsoring yeah. with the podcast. I mean, yeah. it's stuff we just like to see. Yeah. Uh, maybe w maybe one day we can get Moose on a race car. We'll see. You know what I mean? That's it's, it's, it'll be a big yeah. big. That's a big nut to crack. But you know, yes, we'll, we'll try to get him on a race that's car. That's a big or nut. But you, you know, <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> Moose International wants to get the word out that we're still here. What better and way? Still doing. Still doing what we've done since 1911. What better way? Yeah, no, that's awesome, and I, I just learned a ton in the last 10 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, I, you didn't realize yeah. that we just we're just not a, you know, <laughs> like a Lions Club. They yeah. help out, but when they when they get together, they party. Yeah. I, I've I've had the lion. <laughs> I've been to a Lions Club yeah. meeting, but they're a great bunch of guys. Oh yeah, no, I'm definitely excited to spread. The yeah, news we have uh, yeah. 117 moose lodges in Pennsylvania. Oh wow, mm -hmm. and moose lodge. Uh, International uh, contributed eighty million dollars mm -hmm. to charities and Moose Heart. Wow, that is mm -hmm. last year. Good, eighty good. million. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. And I think one thing nice about being a Moose member too is you're not just Moose member of uh, Lodge Four Ten in Middletown. Um, if you go on vacation or whatever and you want a good meal, you can always go to a moose out there, and you're more than welcome. Yeah, you, you, exactly. They welcome you in and you have a good meal exactly. for not a lot of money and. Yeah. You just you know. hunt down the moose and and, and show your card and they'll yeah. you, boom you're in. It's just like being here at four ten. Awesome. Yeah. And there's some really different moose out there. I could give you stories. <laughs> I've seen a lot of them. I fell in love with some. <clears throat> My heart went out for, for a few because mm -hmm. they're struggling. But it's it's interesting going around the different moose lodges. Oh yeah, <laughs> I believe it. Okay, that's great. And, uh, again, thank you very much. Um, and that's the, the Middletown Moose Lodge 410. Yep, Lodge 410. 100 Mill Street, Street Middletown, Town. Pennsylvania. If you go in there, tell them you heard stop the podcast. Right in, and stop back right in, fill out an application, yeah. and, and, and Thursday night's coming for the wings. Yeah, yeah. wing night every Thursday night, by the way. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. taco night every Tuesday night. Oh, man, we got to do two night. podcasts a week. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. won't be able to fit in your truck. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, John. That's, thanks again, John. That's, uh, <coughs> we, that's we awesome. Again, we thank you very much. So well, we're thank gonna, you for we're having me. I know you got to get back down there and run th run things. So we'll uh, cut you free here. And, again, thank you. And see you okay. in two weeks. Okay. If not sooner. You. Yes, you want two weeks. Okay. <sighs> okay, we're back. Just uh, – John just walked out of the studio here. We, uh, again, want to thank him for for coming on tonight and uh, sponsoring us with some wings. They were great, got to say. I'm still eating the wings, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were good. They were good. They were as good. always. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, anyhow, on to racing. What we've uh, all, all want to talk about tonight here. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a crazy week or so. Um I guess we'll start out here with Dover last week. Mm -hmm. um, not one of, I mean, I've every race to me is entertaining, but hasn't been as uh, hyped as, as the other races in the playoffs. Um, I guess basically to sum it up in the uh, cup side of things, big news was all the mechanical failures. Uh, Joey Logano falling out right before the race. I, I forget if it was a broken axle. Once um, again, all the mechanical failures. I mean, yeah. it, seems, it just seems like it's getting crazy. It, it, the yeah. time when these these folks should be running at their very tippity top, they're, they're breaking down left and right. What's going on with that? Yeah, exactly. I know. That's <laughs> that's what's crazy is that kind of happened um, last year with, with uh, Jimmy Johnson at that yeah. race. And I remember it just we were there, and um, I think it was an upper control arm or ball joint because – he rolled onto the track with the rest of the field and kind of went to the apron and wanted to right away. Mm -hmm. And you see that right front just hopping inside the wheel well, and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. that ain't good. I think he got came out, you know, six laps down to start. Joey came out 24 laps down. Um, so that's just, uh, gosh, I, I would hate to be put in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to run 400 mm -hmm. miles. Oh, yeah, and you're 24 laps down. Um, yikes. And... Um, so I think the the 
big news around him this week was um, everybody wasn't – well, not everybody, but some of the front r- runners weren't appreciative of how he was racing them, being that far down, and um, that's tough. Hey, you know, Joey Logano's a racer. He's, he wants to race the car for everything it's worth, every lap. And he has just as much right to be in those spots as they do. Um, and he was racing hard, but I didn't see him wrecking anybody. I didn't see him. Yeah, he was hard to get around, yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't putting his bumper to you to move you out of the way either. Exactly. So, That's, yeah. Yeah, he's got as much right to be in there. And, and when points mean everything. Yeah. I mean, you could be in or out by a single point in this thing. Oh, yeah. So you gain a position back or something somewhere in line because of, you know, a, a uh, Another support car up another team. Yeah, yeah. Parked or you know, with a brake issue and you make up another point or two. That mm-hmm. could be in, that could be in your championship. Oh yeah. That's the thing. I I um I don't know. I mean I, I just I get their frustration <clears throat> at that point. I guess you'd rather the guy just mm-hmm. give up, but clearly there's way too much at stake. There's sponsors there that you know, they they're they're ready to race yet yeah, it's things they are twenty four laps down. And you know, it's just obligations. I mean, you have to race. And mm-hmm. if I was Joey, if if somebody's going to make me sit in a car for 400 miles with no chance in, in anything to, to have a good day, mm-hmm. I'm just going to go by instinct. I'm driving my heart out no matter what. Like, you don't – it's hard to, to, to explain this. You can't drive these things half, you know. No, I think that's what people don't realize. Yeah. They have to be driven hard every lap. Yeah. Or they're a handful to begin with. Exactly. You know. Sometimes it's safer to drive the crap out of it. Drive the car hard, Um, sure. Yeah, so, you know, and and, um, at that point you're probably frustrated. You really don't give a crap how anybody else's day goes. I wouldn't either. I mean, I'm, you know, he is below the cut line now. Um, Yeah, I, I get I get both sides of it, but I don't think there's any. If I was Joey, I know I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I mean, Shell Pennzoil doesn't pay umpteen million dollars exactly. a year to watch their logo. Yeah. You know, just move out of the way and let everybody go by. Yeah, for y'all to go home because you <laughs> broke an axle or something. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and more on the mechanical failures, I think, I don't know if it was lap nine or eight or maybe it was a little later that Chase Elliott blew up. Um, that was crazy. He was. Fast all yeah, who knew? Who knew? I mean, uh-huh. a Hendrick car. Yeah, in the chase, that yeah. has an issue. That's weird. And um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, both Joey and Chase were really fast. And then I forget when it was in a race, but I know Ryan Blaney fell out. I don't know what that was. Um, so I don't know the fourth car below the cut line right now, but I know that <laughs> both Chase, Ryan, and Joey Logano are below the cut line going into Talladega. I mean, Scary, right? Going into Talladega. Yeah. There are some people that are very happy about that, but <laughs> oh my gosh, that's. I don't think they. I don't think anyone be, was expecting that they would be where they're at. Yeah. Going into Dega. Exactly. It it could. Uh, I mean, Dega can always be a miracle for some, but it's you know some of them guys that are in the top eight right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it could really be a miracle for them after the week that that those mm-hmm. three guys had. Um, so, but hey, yeah, Dover's. Uh, I mean, I'd like to say it's stuff on equipment, but one was a motor, and the other one didn't even hit the racetrack. So we can't get those to miles. Something else is up <laughs> that day. But um, so yeah, so um, Kyle Larson ended up winning. So congrats to him. Um, Martin Truex was definitely fast all day, but mm-hmm. um, it's cool to see them get back to it. I think it's been like seventy-eight races or something since Kyle won. Always been good there. Um, so uh, now he doesn't have to worry about Talladega. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, he s- said he la- landed on his lid last year there, and now he can again if he wants to. So, um, but yeah, no, that should be a fun race. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It's it's always to me. I feel like Dega is always the same, and then it's always different. Like you have different. Mm-hmm. Like last year, the I don't know if it was last year or the year before, the SHR cars were just. You couldn't break them up. I mean, if they didn't run out of fuel, they would have finished one, two, three, four. And um, that seems to be what it's about nowadays. It's, it's it's not really who has the best package. I mean, sure you can have a manufacturer that is maybe a little bit slicker or faster mm-hmm. than the other ones, but it's whoever gets grouped up. 
I mean, Chase won in the spring. Him and Alex Bowman were hooked up. I think they had Chevy help with him the whole time. Um, kind of like the old days, it seems like. That, that We could see a first-time winner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could see a McDowell, who's really good at yeah. you know, Talladega. Yeah. Uh, we could see uh, De Benedetto, who's mm -hmm. another big tra good big track racer. So yeah. you, get, you, know, it, you never know. We could see one of these guys pull one off. Oh, yeah. Which would be fun. It'll be. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's it's cool that we have a wild card almost in every um, round here. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the next round, uh, I guess Martinsville would be considered your wild card there. It's what, Texas, Martinsville, and then mm -hmm. Phoenix. Maybe Martinsville, Phoenix, and Texas. Well, the Martinsville is pretty tame yeah. anymore, too. I mean, it's yeah, it's not the way it used to be. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, speaking of Dega, is that one of the tracks you would rather be at the race? At the racetrack or on TV? Um, ooh, that's uh, yeah. I if um if there's not an Earnhardt in the race, I'd rather be at home. Okay. But if there's an Earnhardt at it, um, I'd rather be there because the crowd and maybe it's like that with Chase Elliott now. But the crowd, I I never forget um watching that 2000 race there, um. Those days, like mm -hmm. when Earnhardt won his last race there, when there weren't safer barriers, and I'm only saying that because it was wider. Mm -hmm. It was a wider racetrack, old surface. <laughs> um, you had three, four wide the whole way back. I mean, guys just can't. That, <laughs> it's funny with all the packages you think we're chasing any car mm -hmm. nowadays. That's the closest you've ever, we've probably ever gotten. And his cars mm -hmm. were set up nothing, you know, to, to, imitate uh, any car but you look at the guys that got runs i mean there was a lead change like every single lap i mean it was just it's like a video game i mean mm -hmm. that that kind of racing i'd kill to be there for just to watch um experience that and those engines back then sounded awesome yeah exactly too. um i'm actually gonna go with a hybrid on this okay i say at the track at the campsite oh yeah on the big screen Oh, yeah. I mean, the best yeah. of both worlds. You're right. You're right. Like <laughs> the Talladega infield? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Time. Watch it from the infield on, yeah. on your big screen TV? Oh, yeah. That that with a cold beer and your lounge chair? Yeah. I, I agree. I think that could be the way to go. Mm -hmm. I agree because it gets just as crazy in there. <clears throat> yep. That's like last year when we were at Dover, um, you know, I really don't get to get to too many races and sit in the stands anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when Chase Elliott took the lead last year, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, the stands weren't packed. He's not in Earnhardt. He is the most popular driver, but he ain't Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mm -hmm. taking the lead, you know, at Talladega. I couldn't believe the place. Everybody was shaking. <clears throat> I mean, it was awesome. I mean, there were people that didn't even have his shirts on that were cheering. Awesome. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I sure as heck was. And um, so that's something I always did want to experience. And, and I don't know if it will ever happen. I mean, that time in NASCAR where you were standing in the grandstands with, you know, 200,000 other people. Just amazing. I mean. That's what's nice about going to a race. The, the whole, the, the vibe is totally different at the oh, track yeah. than it is uh, on yeah. TV or anywhere else. Yeah. But. As much as I hate to say it, like, again, they focus so much on the quality of racing. Screw that. Mm -hmm. You need to do whatever you need to do to get the fans back. And as much as, like, everybody, well, okay, that's the quality of racing. You know, if the racing was better, fans would come. No. Racing's been great. I mean, it's it's. It way, has been. It has been some yeah. of the best racing we've probably ever. I mean, true racing we've ever actually seen. Yeah. Because I the mean, talent level now is. Yeah. So we're, equal amongst the top our top tier drivers that. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, we're spoiled. I mean, uh, the the intervals, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, in these races from first to second is way smaller than they've ever been. You mm -hmm. don't have anybody winning. You know, there's a handful of times I really can't think of a time it happened this year yet. I know um, in 17, there were some times where Truex won by like 11 seconds. Okay, he wasn't straight up 27 second half track in a field now, which happened. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a lot, plenty of sold out races that didn't come down to the wire. And the next year, they were still sold out. Like, it's just, it's not, um, I think, I don't, it's tough. I mean, again, the sport changed so much in the late 90s to try to keep things going. But I'll tell you what, when the trend was at its peak, looking at the racing then, we had 43 cars, mm -hmm. 48 qualifying, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
tons of sponsors, tons of weekly hardcore sponsors. You know, if if a team like this, this is what grinds my gears a little bit. When <laughs> I, and this, hi right, Peter Griffin, give us. Look, I know this. <laughs> what grinds this, your gears? Yeah, <laughs> and this happens in every <clears throat> series, and I get it for small teams. I get it for rookies that are just trying to to put things together and make their names for themselves. But when – I'll just say this. When you announce a season, um, you're going to run with this team, this sponsor. Hell, we'll, we'll have the card to Hall of Fame. We'll do a big presentation. Um, and that sponsor that you unveiled that day is on for two races. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I cannot stand that. Like, everybody, everybody looks at that paint scheme. Oh, wow, that's, you know, okay, that's what that guy's going to – like, sure, for us in the sport, do we give a crap? We're, we're trying to just make it. Honestly, like, mm-hmm. paint my car pink, paint my truck pink. I'm just trying to get on the racetrack. I get that. I, I like agree. the pink truck, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make fun of my fire suit. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah, <laughs> pink fire suit this week. Um, <laughs> so, like, and – that's, I mean, I don't want to bash on a model or the, the people involved, but, oh, my God, that's – they don't realize how big that was for the sport. Dale Jr. drove the number eight Bud car, mm-hmm. period. Jimmy Johnson drove the 48 Lowe's car, period. You know, like, I mean, I know there's been a handful of drivers that drove for Robert Yates and drove for, what was it, Morgan McClure, but for a couple years you had Sterling Marlin in the Kodak 4, you know, Dale Jarrett in the Auto Care 88, Quality Care, my bad. Um, that's probably one of the biggest um, gripes I get from uh, older people who yeah. used to come, who came up with the sport a little bit, you know, a l- little bit sooner. Than I did even. Yeah. Is that the brand identity went with the driver, and we don't have that anymore? Exactly. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you knew who, who who was driving what. Yeah. Just like you said. Yeah. Burton was a '99 Sicko. <coughs> that, like yeah. that was just, you know, I mean, why would anybody? spend let's be honest here $65 on a die cast I love die cast I got probably 40 mm-hmm. at least of the 124s but to get your own driver you gotta get six different die casts yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and I'm not even counting the model cars that I have like <laughs> that I did you know myself in that like that's that's what fans love we love the paint schemes we feel like that's an art that's our driver we're gonna walk around town wearing our eight bud gear if you you know, root for William Byron today. Well, hell, you better buy a Hertz hat. You better buy an Exalta hat. You better buy a Liberty hat. Like, I get it. They're trying to put things together. Um, but you know what? I'll, Dale Earnhardt Jr. did really well, I felt like, when they had Mountain Dew and, and National Guard on board. Mm-hmm. Um, they combined those two sponsorships so well to where the paint scheme was different. It just changed color. But on every piece of gear you got, it had both logos damn near the same mm-hmm. size. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I mean, you like it was an Amp National Guard car. You just set it together, <laughs> Amp Energy. You know, um, so that's one thing I think. Like, I mean, heck, I I encourage anybody who's listening to go on YouTube and look up uh, NASCAR Man and and Brock Beard because he'll explain all these things. We had nicknames for the paint schemes. You mm-hmm. had what well, we had. We had the. I mean, obviously. Sterling's car was a silver bullet. You had, um, what was it, the Kodiak Bear, the Strader Drove? Is that what they called that? There's another name for it. Obviously, you had the Rainbow Warriors. Mm -hmm. You had the Intimidator. Like, you got to a point to where the personalities, hell, the cars even had nicknames. There's another one. I'm trying to think of what it was. It was good. Um, And anybody who followed the sport in the 90s, you know, recognize these the second you see them and uh so i feel like that's something we're lacking like that's that's the big thing is it's not the quality of racing it's the personalities it's the the branding and the companies involved loyal as ever um and i think uh honestly the only way you get that kind of thing back is the financial model i mean you can't you know, it's hard to find sponsors that can afford to be on a car all year long. All year long, yeah. That's yes. that's what we got to fix. We got to, you know, as much as we want to help fans, look, the fans will come also if we have the companies, you know, 100% in and the personalities 100% in, the teams 
Instead, we got, you know, 30% from 10 different people. Yeah, yeah. And social media, I think, had something to do with that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because nowadays, a company can go on social media, and for not much money, Oh yeah. they can plaster their logos everywhere. Yeah. And uh, get probably the same return on investment. Yeah. It's a great so, sport to invest mm-hmm. in, but if there's anybody out there that thinks it's as good as what it was 20 years ago, I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> I, 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 I hate to say, but I think those days are done. I think it's yeah. we got to find something else. Yeah, I think we we definitely can't. We have to have a way to not, like, I want companies to be involved. Don't get me wrong. I want them to be involved in a big way. I mean, it was such, it was a pride thing for so many companies and, and employees to be involved with NASCAR mm-hmm. at that time, Winston Cup Racing. Um, you know, but if we had a way to where the cars weren't so sponsorship dependent to where the teams weren't so sponsorship dependent, they Mm -hmm. can give more to the sponsors or maybe take less. You know, we, we need it so badly, um, that they're, you know, they're, they're trying to get everything they can and get as many companies involved. And, um, there's just not enough to go around or else we'd have 48 cars qualifying instead of trying to fill a 38 car field. That's, I mean, that stinks, you know, mm-hmm. and not having as many people involved. Um, I don't care what they say. Like, if they, you know, if if there's anybody that wants to beat Formula One, they can go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but this, the sport was yeah. on the top in the 90s because it was something that everybody in this country could relate to. Everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, and not that you, like, people say, well, it's still stock car, you know, it's still racing. It's car racing. Why can't you relate to it today? But they, they look nothing like what we're driving on the street. If anybody in their right mind who's actually listening to the broadcast or follows these things know how expensive these things are, like, not that they weren't expect expensive in the 90s, but mm-hmm. still, I mean, we're not, you know, we weren't tar- talking $25 million a year for a cup season. Um, so that's, uh, you know, there's just a bunch of different things. Obviously, we're not even touching on the whole grassroots part of it. The, mm-hmm. the you know the local tracks don't go to lo- local tracks anymore um, our feeder series it's one thing if our cup season or our cup series doesn't but the feeder series don't even go um, you know that's what was the beauty in my opinion of the truck series they hit evergreen Nashville I mean mm-hmm. there's plenty of great short tracks out there that that we're not using I think we're at outdoor that's about it everything yeah. else is like a, a yeah. cookie cutter tracks and the exactly uh, like regular series tracks. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So it's kind of, I think, um, bit, <coughs> bit things in the butt a little bit. I mean, it was great to have those cookie cutter tracks in the 90s. I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall at one of those races where there was 200,000 people there. I mean, I just can't imagine that. I, it, it, it was actually kind of sucked. Oh, I, I, mean, b- you I there. believe it, yeah. I've been to yeah. Pocono a couple of times when it was like in the heyday. Yeah. And at one time, Pocono announced, hey, we added 1,000 more seats. Yeah. No, they didn't. <laughs> they put the numbers closer together on the seats yeah. that were there. Yeah. Yeah. So you <laughs> Yeah. If you were anything over like two twenty, <laughs> you could barely fit in a damn seat. Yeah. Yeah. I believe. It. I mean, it. But yeah. I mean, it looked mm-hmm. like in those days it was more comfortable to stand. Like. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, Bristol in '98 with Labani and Dale. Mm-hmm. I'd have loved to. Oh, the you know all the cameras and the people there. I mean, the crowd. That was just next to a riot. I mean, <laughs> it was so cool to see on TV, and I watched these old races. Like I said, Talladega, again, you could hear the crowd in, like, in the TV. Mm-hmm. And they weren't, like nowadays, I know people complain NBC's kind of been getting some uh, criticism because for some reason the car audio is really jacked up. Like you can't hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's all. You don't know what they're saying. Let's. Yeah. Let's they put the subtitles up. Yeah. Or the captions. You don't. Yeah. And sometimes with when they use the wall cameras, and I, I don't care. I'm. I'm just saying that this mm-hmm. is what I'm reading, um. Because I'll turn, ask my parents when I walk in, the TV is already up to 55, from 12, mm-hmm. and if the green flag drop, it's going up to 75. Yeah. I have the thing booming, and I love those over the wall cameras. Where they're just sitting there, just flying by the flyby cameras. Mm-hmm. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, when they go to those cameras, you can't hear Steve Latart or Rick Allen. Or I used to like Digger. What happened to Digger? I know, right? You're right. What happened to that camera? Fox, Fox dropped him, I Remember guess. Digger yeah. was awesome. Yeah. You're right. I don't think anybody has those <laughs> cams anymore. I, for a little while, they just quit calling it that, and now they don't even have them anymore. Yeah, I don't think. yeah, yeah. Um, but, and so a lot of people are saying on Twitter, like, why is the vol like, the, the sound around a racetrack so loud? Like, and they didn't even do that back then in 98. And you could still hear it. That's how crazy it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I guess in some cases going to a college football game, you know, it'd be similar, but when you when the crowd is louder than forty engines, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, go, going to any live event is totally different than. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, I probably the <coughs> probably the most people that's ever been to a race when I like that I went to, I can't I can't imagine it getting over fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if I've been to a race where it's been more than forty thousand. Sadly, um, still awesome though. It's still live. Mm-hmm. There's still people there. There's still cheers. There's still tons of enthusiasm in the sport, and it's so cool to see tons of kids. Um, so, I mean, it's there. You're never NASCAR is really blessed in one thing. For a long time in this country, <laughs> well, we have cars. Therefore, we will have a long time to have a sport that's very relatable to. Until everybody just starts taking buses for some reason. You know, um, it's like I watch a bus race. I, I would watch a bus yeah, race. I'd watch a bus race. <laughs> yeah, and like, and not that other sports aren't. I mean, relatable. I guess. I mean, I guess we can all say we did this or that in little league. But look, we all know that if any of us, especially me, if I go to an NBA game, take one look at any of those guys, that's yeah. There's no way. It's the reason why NASCAR ever took off. It's one of those few sports where everybody could show up and almost have in the back of their mind, you know what? If I got a chance, I bet I could show them too. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's what's great about it. And and it's one of those sports that, like, up until you're 40 years old, if if not even later, there are amateur series. Like, you can race at any point in your life almost. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. There's, that's that's what other sports don't have. Like we have dirt tracks all across the country that just could be the backbone of this sport if NASCAR would let it be because you got guys that are in their 30s who work 50 hours a week do enough or raising the family they could just sit at home all weekend and relax Mm -hmm. but hell no they're building a street stock and a sprint car and they're going out racing all weekend and spending every dime that they have (laughs) on it and we don't take advantage of that you know um that's that's uh, a huge like I'm sorry but I mean yeah football doesn't have that I don't unless you know somebody who's 40 and has is in a football league I don't know about um, I well, hope I'm not one well you have midget football and all the way up through but there's no there's some minor league teams around stuff like that yeah like, but it's not the same it's yeah. not near like it's usually their wives are watching and that's yeah about it that's the thing like and that's still cool and power to anybody who does that but the amount <laughs> that families sacrifice and invest yeah. to do this stuff. Um, yes, you can bet your boots that they will turn on NASCAR on Sunday after they're done all of it. And they will go to any NASCAR race they can that they're not actually racing the same day. Um, mm-hmm. it's just automatically there. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna buy their kids NASCAR toys or, you know, clothes and stuff like, like if they race, they're automatically compo- going to support the, the top tier of the sport. If the sport would just recognize them and that's, that's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, beating a dead horse to death i guess but that's what i hear all the time like there's no new fan there's no there's we don't need a new fan Mm -hmm. the dirt tracks the local tracks are still almost packed they're still consistent we have great turnouts at local tracks here in pa and there's like you i mean you could go to williams girl friday you could go to susky on saturday like any night that weekend there's multiple tracks you Mm -hmm. can choose from and all of them are surviving like there's there's plenty to go around. Like, <laughs> bring your goggles. Yeah, bring your goggles. Like, if I mean that's that's the thing. That's like, it is right in front of them, in my opinion. And not my job. I'm not there. I shouldn't be criticizing. But when I go from one world to the next, that's what gets me upset. It's like you see how much these people love it and how much this other world needs them. But mm-hmm. they won't go back to a short track. They won't. Instead, we're just focusing on 
rule changes, with the cars, with the package, with the schedule, but yet, gosh darn, we just can't put one more race in the schedule to get another short track there, you know, um, or Kyle Busch last year, sorry, I'm going to have to say it, he was complaining on NBC because how dirty things got in the hauler when he went to Eldora. I know, I know, I know. Co- I'm sorry, that's... Like, like he cleans the hauler. Yeah, anyhow, <laughs> like... <laughs> close the door and, Some tells and, me you don't have the mop you're not you're, you're yeah. not sweeping the hall around yeah like i don't blame anybody back <laughs> home who works their butt off all week to do this stuff and spends every extra dime they have to do it and to really not give a damn about nascar because really you, you have people like that that don't seem to give a damn about them so mm-hmm. um and i'm sorry but if i were to you know if if anybody deserves better, it's those guys. They're they're the ones making the sacrifices. You know, for every I'm sorry, but for everybody in NASCAR, yes, they are making sacrifices, but it's also their job. Mm-hmm. They're also getting paid for it. <laughs> like, I I I'm sure everybody in the sport. Trust me, I've been chasing it to be there myself. Will have their tough days and days where, wow, maybe I should just live. You know, something do something normal, not travel so much, maybe not be involved in just racing. Period let alone this kind of level, true, that's tough. But these guys literally have settled with the mindset that they are going to have a regular job and race. They're going to try to do both. Mm -hmm. And it's like I admire there's so many guys, and we have a guest list full of them that's going to be coming on here to to explain this better. So many guys just here in PA and and across the country um, that, again, if, like, they automatically feed the support. Like, that's where NASCAR is lucky. I mean, it it, it will always have this um, backbone of these guys. But, because they, I'll give it to them, they never turn away. But there would be a lot more passion like there used to be in the sport if there would just be a little bit of recognition, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, like, I got to give it to NBC. I don't know, did you get to watch that grassroots um, program, that hour-long documentary they did the other week? Uh I can't remember, man. Yeah, well, I think it was on in the store while you guys were actually working on Saturday. Um, Feel free, everybody, to to go to YouTube. I'm pretty sure NBC actually posted the full, it was like 46 minutes or something, um, documentary. Probably going to be a re-air. Just talking about grassroots racing across the country. Um, And, uh, again, what feeds the sport. I mean, that stuff's awesome. I, you know. Got to go to the dirt track last two weekends, actually the kart races. So kind of back, you know, not just back to legends and dirt racing in general, but back to where I started when I was a kid. Um, love it. I mean, that's 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 the purest form you're going to get. There's still dads out there that, that I love it. They want to be Ray Abraham. It's great. <laughs> what were you testing in, buddy? Oh, yeah, I did get to test two last night. We've been going to dirt tracks all over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I got to jump in a midget for the first time <laughs> last night. Didn't have anybody's <laughs> approval, but I did it. <laughs> no regrets. My mom and dad were happy. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. As soon as <laughs> I got out, they were, got the text message, they were happy. But, um, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that was a blast. That's uh, Got to shout out Jamie Spears and Royalton Recycling uh, down here. It gave me a chance to get in, get in his midget and run some laps at BAPS. I mean, uh it looked fun. It looked like you were hauling the mail going down and front and back stretch. Yeah, like those things do. And I, I wish I could have got out for one more time because I know I could have hauled it more. Like mm-hmm. they, well, they're so different just with the steering box um, being so more quick than anything I've been to where you can do lock to lock. And I mean, in a second, whereas okay. like a legend or nobody can see my hands right now, but you know, and it's just like a stock car legend or, you know, or when you're, you know, even the truck. I mean, it's hand over hand, mm-hmm. back and forth to try to get to lock to lock. Um, where anybody that knows these these midgets and these sprint cars, it's this different. Um, so that was different. Like, uh, and the stagger in it, and the big right rear, like it was so out of control down the straightaways. I kind of like I had heard that. I know those things mm-hmm. are more like they're more out of control. Like they're happy when they're in a slide. So, you kind of got to wrestle it down the straightaway, and it's weird because sometimes it'll pick up the right front tire and want to dart towards the wall and then back to the inside. Um, and, like, I wasn't setting it hard enough. Like, okay. they they kind of told me with the, you know, 
four more inches of stagger than I'm used to with a legend car, a huge right rear, mm-hmm. um, and just more power overall, less weight. The weight ratio, the wedge in it, could kind of rotate it more. Like I wouldn't have to throw it in with a legend. Usually with a legend, you gotta yank it in, and even like you either gotta snap the brake, or you gotta punch the gas. Okay. Um, so. I kind of just figured I needed to be easy with it. Well, I just was too easy. Like, I'd kind of go in almost straight, um, and it'd start to rotate for me. Um, and if you could see Tony right now, he's actually up on the wheel. Yeah, I'm, I'm making yeah, he's, moves. Yeah, he's making moves. We got to He's get leaning into it. Yeah, yeah he's. I'm, my good thing is chair He's, he's breaking. He's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got, he's throttling down. I can't do it without my hands, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, good thing these chairs spin. Cause I know, I was, it's awesome, I was right? straight, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. sideways. Um, and so, like, <clears throat> it's uh, – yeah, I mean, like, and some, I learned that you just kind of got to, you got to swing it in a little bit, which, again, with these things, is you know, might only be a quarter turn of the wheel, if that, compared to Legend, and I just wasn't used to doing that yet. It's just too careful for him, and then um, once you do get in that slide, you kind of just, instinctively, for me, I just want to correct it, mm-hmm. and you just got to let it roll, you know, to me, in a Legend car, you would come back to the right, and you might still get in the gas and leave it sideways, but you're still turn and right whereas this thing you're like okay like 12 one o'clock like you you feel like you're supposed to be sideways and you're barely mm-hmm. really correcting the thing and that could change per setup i mean that's just that's not midgets overall but just what we, we had in it and we had a brand new right rear on it so like it was hooked up like tighter than i okay. probably would be used to like it probably had we left the old one on it probably would have slid in a little bit easier for me instead of need like i needed to punch it more to get it okay. sideways so first couple times i'd punch it get it sideways and kind of correct a little too quick and and jump out of the slide jump off the right front and then get back into it get sideways again so it was like kind of in and out throughout the corner and then off this off the shoot it was easy it was good um, but there was a couple times where i could finally get it sideways just leave it there and punch it and um they couldn't see because they were on the back stretch. But I was trying to figure out. I'm, I'm almost positive I picked up both front wheels on the back or front stretch. Okay. Which was awesome. First time I ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like unresponsive for a second. Kind of notice I'm looking at the sky and then bang, and then I'm back down. Doing wheelies. Yeah. I'm like, man, I didn't even know I was doing a wheelie until I came back to the <laughs> to the ground. Um, oh yeah, those things are awesome. I hope I can uh, get in one of them again. But um, so we'll no, yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't tell. I hope your mom and dad don't listen. But you're almost old enough. You can make your own decisions now. You're good. Yeah, you're right. I'm Twenty, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> don't tell me I said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so no, I mean that's that's the thing. We've been doing a bunch of dirt racing here lately, and um, gotta give a shout out to Adam Meyer. That legend car I raced for him this year. He's working on getting a new one built. Uh, those guys work hard. Um, yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people don't see that. Like we, uh, how how dejected would you get if you had a car that you put a lot of work into, a lot of money into, and mm-hmm. and you or, or or a friend that you let drive it, you know, got in a pretty bad wreck, flipped the thing, and totaled it. That's what people don't understand. This stuff happens all the time in mm-hmm. dirt racing, and it's just well, I'll be back if not in a month or two, I'll be back next year. You know? Yeah, I'll be back when I can afford to be back. Yeah, like yeah. right away. Like it's not even a question. Um, mm-hmm. Rick Hartwig, who I'm hoping to have on here in a few weeks, um, that guy is amazing. I mean, he has had so much bad luck this year, just um, just being on the wrong end of, of wrecks that weren't his fault, mm-hmm. mechanical issues. Um, we kind of all bust on him because he's been. I mean, he's been racing for years now, but um, his car was always red, always red number nine. Um, he painted it silver this year. I thought it looked badass. I love mm-hmm. it. Um, Why well, everybody's pretty sure that that's a problem. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I, he's painted a red. I think this is the first weekend back in red after all year, and uh, I hope he does well. Go with the superstition um, thing, okay. Oh, yeah. but And he's a one-man show. I mean, he's now he's, you know, there's a lot of friends that have been helping him, and, and honestly, I don't know who wouldn't. This is the nicest guy in all, the, not just legends, in all the pit areas, I'm certain, in PA. Like, I didn't, like, we didn't really, I mean, my first year, I didn't really work on setups with anybody. Um, I was a little intimidated to ask for advice. I was just trying to figure things out myself. Mm-hmm. Prideful, I guess. Um, 
I went in the pit next to him every week. I had nothing to do with <laughs> setup. Um, I like to, you know, I think we like to bounce things off each other. Um, but I knew if I tore something up that night, I'd still have a good time. Yeah. If I was next to him. Um, and I had, you know, some other friends that I'd have loved to pit next to too. Um, but it was always a blast with him and, um, admired him cause he just, he never usually has that much help with him. If any, like, so he's, you know, rolling the car back out himself, turning it around himself, mm -hmm. getting things ready all by himself, trailer set up. Um, and I just thought that was badass. And then, um, that was that 2016 or yeah, 16, I think when dad had his heart attack, I was, you know, I did, I think seven or eight races by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, I think one race I was able to get Tristan to come to maybe two races. And then there was another two races where I was able to get a cousin to. So I think like, like four out of those eight weeks, I had one person there. Um, and that helped. They weren't always with me, like riding along. So sometimes they show up later. So I'd still have to get things out, get the car out by myself and, um, get things ready. And nobody else helped in the shop. And I'm sure that's just like Rick. Mm -hmm. Like I, as far as the garage goes, I was the only thing that touched that thing. Um, and that's like not a bad thing. Like if you ask my family, they I wanted it that way. I didn't want anybody touching it. <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes I like that too. It's yeah, just, my stuff. Leave it alone. Oh yeah, and you gotta you know you have a list, and sometimes we're busy. Yeah. you know half that list might be in your head, um, and you need to check it off yourself. Like if somebody else checks it off for you, or you think they did and they didn't, that's how you break stuff. Um, and so <laughs> yeah, I mean it was. Um, so there was definitely at least four races where I'm pretty sure I was by myself completely. And it was, um, I mean, there's a bunch of other people in the Legend of Series that I'm not mentioning that helped me out those nights. Um, I'll always be grateful for them. I mean, those were some cool nights. And, and of course, always being around him, we could kind of double team some things. And um, it's uh, it was fun. I mean, honestly, we kind of joked those nights um, were some of my better better nights ever you just like to be racing i mean that's yeah. the way you're built like that it's just you just want to be racing something yeah exactly i mean it was yeah there were some nights where i did way better than i ever did before and like mm -hmm. i that was before i drove for straight or before i met him but I, it's ironic I, I remember thinking of him and some of the outlaw guys like man i feel pretty cool because yeah. it was summer i had just got my license <laughs> and my family was nice enough i don't even know if i was like I had way less hours than normal here at the store with dad um, while he was getting better. They kind of like knew that I, I wouldn't have any help at the racetrack. So they mm -hmm. almost felt like that was a punishment or something. So like I mm -hmm. didn't have to, I was almost relieved from everything else but racing um, for those, you know, a month and a half, two months. And it was great. I mean, I was just working on the race car till late, going to bed, waking up, working on the race car loading up, driving the thing to the racetrack, loading it, unloading it myself, um, racing it, loading it myself, coming home. And mm -hmm. I remember a couple of nights I had the thing out three in the morning, um, washing it, fixing it. Cause I had a race the next night. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like the closest thing you'll ever get as a kid to the outlaw circuit. I mean, I loved it. And it's like, I'd go back to that in a heartbeat anyway, if I could, um, but, uh, you know, and uh, I'll have to post some more pictures here. Like I said, for everybody listening, we will have a camera here soon. But this can be mm -hmm. on Facebook, and you guys can see us, see the pictures. You can watch Tony drive in his chair. Yeah, I can I can drive anything right here at this <laughs> table. Oh, yeah. And it's just a lot of cool pictures around here, and i got to get them posted, too. It's easy to talk about looking at the pictures, and um, hopefully I can get some up to help everybody listening understand where we're coming from. But How are we doing on time, T? We're at uh, 53. Okay. Um, you still want to talk about the uh, the next gen, or do you yeah, want to hold off? Or no? Well, we can give a little, okay. little tidbit Because you're going to put it. a couple pictures on anyway. Yeah, I, I so will. So it makes sense that people know what they're looking at. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll add some pictures. And, um, yeah, so there's not too much news out right now. Um, this will be really interesting. Um this is going to be a huge change for the sport, and um, well, well, we'll all wait till we have our opinion until it's completely out. Exactly, there's, exactly. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't butcher it yet. Yeah, there's a lot of skepticism and then high hopes, and 
honestly, I, I won't put my opinion on it. I mean, if it saves money for teams, great. I hope, my only hope is that it saves just as much money, if, you know, if any, please, for the big teams as it does the small teams. And we're um, talking about the next gen car. Yes. Yeah. Because there's. Due to a debut in. Mm -hmm, 2021. 2021. Yeah. So. This will be. Mm -hmm. Like, the, this. There's a lot of rules nowadays that have been helping the big teams save money. And that's great. Because they will spend. I mean, they'll put hundreds of thousand dollars, hundreds, into their air gun program. Um, until NASCAR made us. Made everybody go to the spec air gun. I mean. I don't like the idea of everybody having the same thing, but for NASCARs, you know, I'll give it to them. You have to. If you don't give everybody a set piece, I don't care if we're talking chassis, motors, air guns, jacks, those teams, to get an edge, will find a way using millions of dollars to mm -hmm. make theirs better. That's just that's just life. That's just competition. Mm -hmm. You have to regulate it somehow. Um, and... I, we won't get into this whole can of worms, but just for everybody listening, there's a rumor, so make your own opinion up in the meantime of this, that NASCAR will be getting rid of live pit stops in Xfinity and trucks. Is this good? Maybe not for the fans. As a team, I would say, and so far there are teams that have said this, hell yes. This is the kind of rule that they want. Like, you don't... See, the, the thing is, the small teams don't like the idea of having spec rules because look okay that's great that joe gibbs and them guys wanted to put crazy amounts of money into those air guns mm -hmm. and now nascar implemented the spec one so that they have to buy this one it's way cheaper they'll save money it's something they can't get beat on so they'll stop investing in it finally so that whole circulation of money that just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year will stop however you also have the back half of the field that really never gave a crap because they couldn't afford it in the first place. That's right. <laughs> so They're making do. Yeah, so when you have this spec air gun, okay, mm -hmm. that costs $3,000 a weekend. Um, there are teams that are using a $3,000 air gun all year. It's mm -hmm. old. Yeah, it's old, but they, they don't care. It'll get the job done. You know, honestly, with stage racing nowadays, we all, I mean, the truck series, almost every pit is under caution. Exactly. You know, there's very few in Xfinity. So, like, who cares? If, if we lose spots under, you know, I'm just saying this as a smaller team. If we lose spots under yellow, we'll try to get it back up. Really, and, you know, this is totally different for Cup. But for everybody now nowadays in this age, if pit stops happen and you lose spots, like, the fastest car will get there. It'll unless mm -hmm. there's unless there's a green white checkered. I'm talking here. If there's a regular routine pit stop with 40, 50, 60 laps to go in a race, and somebody loses three three spots under green, they'll get that back. Um, like it's just that's just how the competition is. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it's tight, but you know, a lot of these smaller teams, the way that back half the field is, they're kind of set in their spots. Like I mean, it's funny. It's not a plus or a negative, but they just happen to end up within the same one or two spots that they're mm -hmm. always at um, most of the time. And so when you put these spec rules in, like I said, they now, now it really hurts them because they had these old tools and old things that they've been using. And no, it's not good, but they've been getting by with it. Give them credit. They're surviving. And now you're making them throw all that away, and now they have to spend the same amount as these big teams. That's those are the kind of rule changes that that really are not helpful. Yeah, sure they help somebody, but they don't help everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why this live pit stop rule is what they want. Okay, let's just get rid of it entirely. It stinks. It stinks for entertainment. But that is one less way for the big teams to outspend us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still one, you know. And as stress, you know, that's stress picked up off the small teams, but it's for the big teams too. I mean, like like they don't want to put thousands of dollars into one jack but they know if they want to win a championship yeah and that guy next to him is gonna they have to do the same thing so mm -hmm. it's you know it's a relief for them too um you know the the teams up front don't give a crap about the the product the the entertainment more than the guys in the back they're they're doing this just like anybody else to try to make money and try to survive in it um 
So if they act like they, well, we want we want to make sure everybody's happy, mm-hmm. fan wise, they're pulling your chain. Um, and so that's the only fear of this Gen Six. And so we'll get to it. I'll put I'll put the picture up. Austin Dillon did a test this past week uh, with NASCAR. It was called the uh, Gen Seven. Now it's called the Next Gen. Um, so don't put too much thought into this picture. The body, pay no attention to it. The the manufacturers, Chevy, Ford, and Toyota, still have not submitted their um, bodies yet, and it's going to take a while because I'm pretty sure NASCAR only gave them the parameters. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it's it's it's, it's what's under the skin right now yeah. that we got to look at. Yeah, they gave them. <laughs> they gave them. I think it was like in this past spring. So the manufacturers, so NASCAR will give them dimensions, widths, lengths, heights. Um, you know, angles that are allowed. And, mm. you know, those manufacturers are going to spend every day that NASCAR allows them to to try to make the most out of every thousand that mm-hmm. NASCAR gives them. And that's how they come up with their body. As they do that, yes, they try to take it from one of their stock cars. So they take a Camaro and they try to use every bit that NASCAR gives them to make it look street but be aerodynamic, fast, shaped like a bullet, Whatever Harry says, you name it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the big notes on the body here is there still is a splitter. That's a big talk. I know everybody, including myself, um, and this isn't final, obviously, was hoping that the splitter would be gone. Um, the left, well, the side skirts, you almost can't tell if they're side skirts. It almost looks like a one-piece thing, and it is a little bit, like the ride height looks a little bit lifted. Um and big note, the exhaust is going out the left side. We don't know if it's going out both sides mm-hmm. or not. It's only a single pipe, it looks like. Well, well, no. I don't know get, what that thing is. It's it's different. It could yeah. be two pipes. It, it, it just might be the body. It looks like an airplane exhaust or something. Yeah, so that's different. <coughs> um, big notice, I'm sure you all are all going to notice this, 18-inch wheels. And I have to look up. I actually think the tire itself is still also smaller. So the okay. sidewall is way smaller, but... Oh, but it's going to ride nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyhow, I think it. I think the tire is actually a little bit wider. Okay. Um, but there's a lot more clearance under the wheel wells, so that'll be interesting. I mean, we have to see what the bodies come out to, but um, may, hopefully this will help with fender rubs. That way, if you touch a guy, it won't take him out for the night. Um, still have five lug rims. There's a big topic right now of whether NASCAR goes to single lug rims or not. That's a rule change small teams mm-hmm. probably do not want to see. No. These things where you have to change everything you have and you have to throw away something. Like, Jordan Anderson is racing a chassis this weekend at Talladega. It's from 2003. Mm-hmm. It's a small team in the truck series. If you don't think that same thing's happening in the cup series, it is. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of old chassis that, that – magic happens to keep them running and um like when you make a rule that that chassis is just straight up illegal that really hurts that team because they've been using that chassis for a long time over and over again Mm -hmm. and and trying to make updates um so that's the 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 biggest telltale about the next gen here is going to be what kind of rule changes is it going to be an air gun kind of rule change um, where it does help the big teams because they finally can stop investing in so many different chassis mm-hmm. and te- technology and research to build so many different chassis. You're, um, you're just going to reinvest it somewhere uh, else. I know, exactly. <laughs> you know. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's tough. I mean, it, there's rumors of them working with Delera that they're the company that makes all the IndyCar chassis. Yeah. So they, they have spec chassis. Um it's a cool concept to me because I just, yeah, the idea of us having 15 different chassis, you know, not including mm-hmm. backups for this year. I mean, yeah, this sport will never, it'll never get cheaper. It'll 100% be solely on sponsors. And the truth is, the more it's on sponsors, the less it's on talent. Um, so they got to, you know, I don't, you just got to help these guys out. And of course, again, we're looking at field size. The more the more years we have it where it's dependable on sponsors, mm-hmm. the more this field's going to shrink. Um, we're we're not getting fifty three cars showing up to Indy anymore. 
Um, we're not getting 40. I'm also hoping, think, thinking that it's going to help with the, the tech process as well, I would think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you've ever been in a racetrack and you're in the pits, watch the tech process. You, you bring a cooler in the lawn chair because you're going to be there a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's just it's for insane. the one time that they run mm-hmm. through out of the five times they're going to have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's that's a big thing. So, yeah, I mean, I hope it'll be my, – my whole thing is just the overall health of the field, and I just hope that it helps bring more people involved. Just the more the more people involved, the better. I think what's interesting here, as much as we talk about Delera, is NASCAR – owns IMSA, let's not forget that, and they do a, you know, that series has a very good baseline for a chassis. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like it's a very good rule book, you know, and I don't know that much about it, so I am ignorant, I'll say that, but from what I, you know, I watch all those races, it's a very stock-looking car, mm-hmm. and yet it's still, it still very well maintains the safety that they need. Mm-hmm. Um and still puts on very competitive racing. Yes, is it road course racing? Yeah, no duh. I thanks. I see that. Um, that's different. We have to now. We have to find out to make those chassis do well in oval. That mm-hmm. that they can't be tampered with, and they can be just as safe and just as competitive. It sounds hard, but I feel like twenty twenty, like twenty twenty one, we should be able to do that kind of thing by now. I would hope so. Um, yeah, and and then once we do that, we can put a stock body on it. Camaro that looks just as good as that Corvette did last year, mm-hmm. or that Ford GT when they brought it back. Those cars, yeah, sure, with the you know the splitters and the winks, no duh, they don't look like a street car, but a lot closer than what we've had in this sport in NASCAR yeah. for a long yeah. time. Um, now, I don't know how expensive they are to build one by one. I do know that they make a lot less less of them than we do in NASCAR the because. Cars? Yeah, because yeah, they they run them con- almost constantly. Yeah. I mean, they run like two or three cars. They'll just run them all year long. Yeah. You don't need to build a fleet of cars. Exactly, and that's the thing. Being that they're all road courses, mm-hmm. and, and there's enough enough adjustability in those things mm-hmm. to where they can adjust them per track. And I think that's the key: the adjustability that's, of those cars. That, yeah, they that's could, what we need. They can do just about anything they want with one chassis. Yeah, yeah. We need to get back to that point. I don't care what kind of chassis. If you find mm-hmm. a way to give NASCAR teams a chassis where they can use. At multiple racetracks, and they can mm-hmm. hang bodies on that are legal at multiple racetracks and just as efficient. I mean, obviously, everybody knows in the truck series, like we have, there's a huge difference always between a super speedway body and mm-hmm. an intermediate track. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not bad. It's not like we have six different bodies, but still, it'd be nice if we ran the same thing everywhere. Um, and it's just, that's the thing. I mean, if we could get that down to where we're just overall building less chassis. Boom! That's right away. You're gonna save money, um, mm-hmm. like those guys do, and we should be able to put something on an oval track um, that does just that does just as well. Or if we didn't have so many intermediate tracks, that problem would also be fixed. True story, <laughs> right? I mean, we can you know you can you can work on short track cars enough mm-hmm. to make them good with with multiple chassis. Um, we can have a super speedway, and we can have a road course. But there's so much emphasis put on the mile and a halfs. And with that kind of load, I think that's where you're having. I think that's the hardest thing to build a chassis for spec um, to be able yeah. to handle a Charlotte. Yeah. Um, short track stuff, road course stuff. I think. I mean, they're already doing it in some ways. Um, so yeah. So that's that's we'll see. That's all we have on it now. Um, we'll see if they go single lug. Um, what kind of aero package? What kind of engine package? There's so many variables left over. Um, I'm, I'm for anything as long as it helps the whole field. Yep, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where we're going. But yeah, so um, no, yeah, sounds good. So I think uh, let's check the list here. I think we covered everything for this week. Uh, going to Dega this weekend. We covered that. I I gave my grassroots spiel. You know, I always got to do that. <laughs> um, I still have some left over, but we will get to that. Um. You've been Go. listening to Grind My Gears with Tony Morogovic. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll have to do another. Ooh. Oh, great. I- okay. Great idea. Just had a live moment on the podcast. We're doing okay. that. We're do- I will have a Facebook Live just for that. Grind My Gears. I hate that because I don't want to be the guy that just shows up on Facebook when he's pissed. Mm-hmm. But I-, I have a small list. I'll give people props, too. Like, I'm not. 
I haven't done anything to where I've been critical, but I'll speak for the, I'll just say this, I'll speak for some of the dirt racers. I'll speak where I'm here. Local racers, not just dirt. I think Grandma Gear has been done, though. Maybe you should do what, you know what blows my motor? Oh, blows my motor, like <laughs> Cold Trickle did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put me at 9,000 RPM, blow me the heck up. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell that's you. That's it. Put a telltale button. You're right. It's a telltale, oh, that's it. We're going to call it that. All okay, right. there That's it is. It. There it is. You heard it, folks. It's going to be called the Telltale Button. We're going to do a little <laughs> segment. Um, feel free to send in any issues you have. <laughs> and we'll yeah, I'd go, say go ahead and go. do that anyway. Uh, um, if you yeah. have anything you want to hear us talk about or give any yeah. feedback on, please. Please do. Um, Comment on the YouTube video. Exactly. Message me on Facebook. If you know my name, please follow me. Friend request me. Send me a message. <laughs> I'll read it. I promise. Um and um you know same thing on twitter twitter instagram um give a shout out to uh slap shoes go subscribe to him on youtube he does a bunch of really cool uh nascar videos um he did one this week specifically on north wilkesboro everybody knows i love that place and um has had quite a twitter presence the last couple weeks with marcus smith being on the dale jr download and stuff getting out that nashville might not come through and all that stuff and hopefully it does who knows um we all know of another track take a lot of work but yeah it's there man it's like if we can make a racetrack out of dirt which we do all the time like nothing there you know if y'all want to look up what the land of you know in texas looked like before they built that thing i'm sure mm -hmm. we can do something with north wilkes bro <laughs> um I'd like to see somebody build me a track that looks like it's old. I know. Let's build a brand new track that looks it's, th it's that has the same resemblance of an old track. It's right time. there, man. It's still got the you know all modern facilities. Yeah. And I will. I will talk that into it. We will supply all the <laughs> red paint to repaint those Winston signs, and I'll go do it myself. <laughs> if anybody's listening, put that out there. Word me. Accuse me of saying it. I'll back it up. Um, so feel free to go on the Twitter. Everybody's been uh, tagging Marcus Smith. I think it's uh, his, his tag is at Marcus Smith SMI. Hashtag Save the Speedway. Get North Wilkesboro back. That guy's got the power. In fact, they still own the racetrack. Um, so instead of letting it sit, let's build some. Those unlike Nashville, there's no noise complaints coming from that area. That's I true. Promise. That's true. That's true. Damn straight. But well, I say for this episode, we'll. Uh, We'll have a new couple new guests coming on next episode. Keep you guys uh, in tune, and uh, in the meantime, stay thirsty, my friends. And thank you once again to Moose Four Ten for the love, for the wings. Yes, we'll yeah. have them next time around. Yeah, great sponsor. All great, right, great group. I learned so much. I hope other people did. It was <laughs> awesome having them on tonight. But uh, cool ten calls. four, ten four. Thanks again for coming on, Spider. Got it, Spider out. T Mac out. <laughs>